Will you pray with me? Guide us, O God, by your word and spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find wisdom, and in your will discover your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior and our Lord, we pray. Amen. Our scripture passage for this morning comes from the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter, verses 19 through 31. Listen, hear, and receive God's word. When it was evening on the day of Christ's resurrection, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When Jesus had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. But he said to them, so the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, Jesus' disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered Jesus, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that though through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Full disclosure, I did not want to preach from this scripture passage today. You see, it's too obvious and expected. Last Sunday, we celebrated Resurrection or Easter Sunday. And this week, to preach about Jesus' appearance to the disciples and Thomas seems too familiar, too expected. However, as I studied and prepared to preach the lectionary passage from Acts, the Spirit of God kept pulling my attention back to this text from John, challenging and encouraging me to see it from a new perspective. If we were not ever able to relate to the disciples' behavior after the resurrection of Jesus Christ before, we can certainly relate now. The writer of the Gospel, John, states that on the evening of the first day of the week, the disciples were locked in a room out of fear. We have firsthand experience and knowledge of being locked in, fearful of being in contact with people outside of our immediate household, fearful of touching contaminated surfaces, fearful of the possibility of breathing in particles lingering in the air and infused with the coronavirus, fearful that contracting coronavirus may have devastating consequences, prolonged illness, protracted hospitalization, and even death. If we are completely honest, we fear that which we cannot see the life-giving and sustaining air, the breath of life. Every day until recently, we were reminded of the number of people who were infected with or who have died from contracting COVID-19. And we were regularly reminded of the unimaginable numbers of unemployed people without resources to pay their bills, secure food, medication, or other life's necessities. 
Like the disciples on that resurrection evening, we are secluded and fearfully hunkered down in our respective homes. We might question why the disciples were fearful of the Jews, as there was evidence that Jesus had risen from the dead, as he said he would. Upon discovery of the empty tomb where Jesus had been, Mary Magdalene encountered Peter and the disciple whom Jesus loved, and she had told them that Jesus' body was not in the tomb. When the two disciples arrived at the tomb, they found it empty except for the linen cloths that had covered Jesus' body and head. Perhaps their lack of understanding about the empty tomb fueled the disciples' fear. As the two disciples fled the empty tomb, Mary Magdalene stayed behind, seeking answers to where Jesus' body had been taken. According to John's gospel, she encountered two angels standing at the foot and the head of where Jesus' body had been laid. And turning, Mary Magdalene encountered someone she presumed to be a gardener, and she inquired about the location of Jesus' body. When the presumed gardener called her by name, Mary immediately realized it was her teacher, Jesus, who had risen from the dead. Jesus instructs her to go and tell his brothers, the disciples, that I am ascending to my father and your father, my God and your God. So Mary ran and she told the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And then she obediently told them everything that Jesus had said. Now, in the vernacular of Southern slang, for some reason, the disciples did not believe that fat meat is greasy. In other words, they did not believe the testimony of Mary Magdalene when she professed that she had seen the Lord. For if they had, why were they still fearful of the Jews? Jesus had told them, do not fear people who can kill the body. However, that is easier said than done. We all know the drill. Stay at home unless absolutely necessary to go out. Maintain at least a six-foot distance from others when in public. Always wear your mask, double mask if possible. Wash your hands continuously. And yet there are people who still refuse to believe that these simple tasks will keep them healthy. As Christians, we know that everyone is fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God, yet we sometimes find ourselves divided as us and them. We know that in Christ, Jew, slave or free, male lines, our quality of life as systems, institutions, and people who are not members of our affinity group. Our awareness, we possess the keen desire to follow thee, so I sinned as Jesus breathed on the disciples and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus breathes new in our personal and collective lives as well. Typically, this is where sermons take us for being absent that evening and then to denigrate him for demanding a sign if he is to believe the other disciples' testimony, the Lord. However, the other disciples, Mary Magdalene, when she declared the same, they did not believe until Jesus showed up in the locked room and showed them his. Their faith had not reached the level of believing the unseen. Now, if I were to take a side trip in this sermon, he read from Psalm 133. He'd been dwelling with siblings and kids. He may have been consoling, comforting, encouraging, feeding, and healing by the sea protection of the locked room, going in and among the people were suffering and alone, discouraged and grieving the death of their Lord and Savior were. Thomas might have been out exercising his faith. Commentator Schmidt continues that faith is a mystery of the heart that the mind wants to solve. To admit that we believe certain things on faith is to say that we are willing in limited circumstances for things not to make sense. We want faith to be shored up by certain evidence so that the leap of faith is manageable. End of quote. The Gospel of John provides a clear message that helps us see the truth so that we will know with certainty that Jesus has indeed risen from the dead, that he has ascended to his Father and our God, that he shows up in places where he is least expected, breathing new life into situations, circumstances, conditions, and relationships that we perceive to be dead or dying. And Jesus breathes new life into us and commands us to go. 
Go share the good news that Jesus has indeed risen from the dead and is dwelling with, leading, guiding, consoling, empowering, and walking with us yet now. To go and to breathe new life into dying situations, dead relationships, hopelessness, and people who are about to give up. Jesus breathes new life into us and commands us to go and provide for the least of these, people who are marginalized or demonized, the unaccompanied children and people crossing the border seeking asylum and safety, to provide for people without food, clean water, affordable health care and housing, to go and comfort people who have experienced abuse and violence, to comfort and stand with communities and people after yet another senseless individual or mass murder, be it by those in authority or those who use guns to destroy, and to go and demand sensible gun laws, equitable housing, access to food and clean water, to minister to incarcerated citizens, and to hold elected officials accountable. Beloved, we have not seen our incarnate Lord and Savior in the flesh, and yet we believe because of the testimony of those who walked with him. We believe because we have the written accounts of his many signs and wonders, his miracles of healing, feeding, challenging systems and structures, of him dying on the cross and God resurrecting him on the third day. We believe because Jesus sent the Comforter to dwell with and within us and to lead and guide us. And we believe because we have witnessed the risen Christ show up in the midst of our messes, our sins and transgressions, illness, death, and loss. We believe because we have mustard seed faith that even when we do not believe, when our faith is wavering and when we have literally or figuratively shut ourselves up in rooms of fear, despair, and desperation, the, wit the risen Christ shows up lovingly declaring, peace be with you. The author of the Gospel of John declares, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, he didn't say this to throw shade at Thomas but to encourage us by faith to believe the unseen and believe that Jesus is the Messiah and Savior and our God, we might have the blessing of this day. May the as we strive to believe the unseen. May it be so. Amen.